Okay, today we are going to be talking about linear regression. Linear regression is some fancy talk for uh, basically determining the equation for the line of best fit. Previously, we had been looking at linear correlation coefficient. And remember, linear correlation coefficient gave us a measure um, of how closely data comes to making a straight line. Um, the next, I guess, progression in the idea of scatter plots and, and linear correlation is to put a line of best fit on the scatter plot, but then also determine the equation for that line of best fit. And today we're certainly going to examine how exactly you can determine um, the equation for the line of best fit for a set of data if it has a linear correlation. The example we're going to be looking at here today examines the hours online um, that students have been spending online doing data versus the number of hours that they've been spending on social media in a given day. So I guess just giving you a sort of uh, um, idea where this data might come from, let's say I did a survey of all the students in our class and this is what they reported back to me and then I randomly selected 10 students that I wanted to include as part of my data set. So here's my data set right here and just so we're understanding the first row for example means that a certain student spent zero hours online doing data and they spent six hours doing social media stuff. So what we're going to do now is first we're going to even um, you know, examine whether this data is being um, or showing a linear trend. And we're in Google Sheets because a lot of what we're going to do today um, can be done more efficiently in Google Sheets than maybe with pencil and paper. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Google Sheets to make me a scatter plot. And I'm just going to click the chart wizard after highlighting the data and Google Sheets is usually pretty good at guessing. And you'll notice here, Google Sheets has done a very good job of guessing that not only did I want to make a scatter plot, but that I wanted to put the hours online for data horizontally and that the hours on social media vertically. And as I look at my scatter plot, I can see while my data is far from being perfectly linear, it is showing a general linear trend, I feel. Uh, classifying the linear correlation, I would describe the linear correlation as being moderate negative correlation. And without me doing the correlation coefficient calculation that we were doing the other day, I can't say for certain, but giving it just the eyeballs test, that's how it looks to me. It's now time to determine the equation for the line of best fit. But first, it would be nice to see the line of best fit on here. So I can click here and click edit chart. And if I recall correctly, if I go to customize and go to series is where I find my option to put a trend line on the scatter plot. Ah, there it is. <clears throat> that trend line, whether or not you think it's in the right spot, um, Google Sheets is telling you that it is mathematically in the perfect spot for this set of data. Um, and now it's time to determine the equation for that line of best fit. Um, when we think about uh, equations of lines, you may take yourself all the way back to grade nine and think about rise and run and y-intercept and you know ex uh, ex uh, expressing the equation of a line in slope y-intercept form. We are absolutely going to examine that today. I'm gonna show you this little bit of math not to freak you out. But just to show you, yes, we are going to be determining the equation of a line in slope y-intercept form. Okay, remember this? I hope you do. Now notice that we're not going to be determining the slope using rise and run. We're using this um, rather uh, intimidating looking formula <clears throat> to determine the slope. And then we're going to determine, and then we're also going to determine the y-intercept using this little formula. Where do these formulas come from? Not really a big concern for us because all we're interested in is knowing how to use them. So back to Google Sheets. Oh, 
Well, first of all, I guess we should examine this, uh, these formulas so we can understand what kinds of math we need to do with our set of data. So looking at the green stuff here, you'll notice to determine the slope for our equate for uh, our line of best fit, we are going to need to know n. n is the number of bivariate pairs we have, and there's 10 of those. Uh, we need to find the sum of x, y. So that's telling us we're going to need to do x times y uh, for all of our bivariate pairs, and then add them up. We're going to need the sum of x, the sum of y. Uh, we're also going to need to do the sum of x squared, and then finally the sum of x squared. Uh, so with that said, let's go back to Google Sheets. And notice I've already created two extra columns here. One of them is going to be x squared, and the other one is going to be x times y. I need to know this. I need to know these for uh, to use the formula. So um, Google Sheets. Okay, if I want to do x squared, I can certainly get out my calculator and start punching this in, but I'm using spreadsheet software. I'm going to let it do the work for me. So I start with an equal sign, and I wanted to do this, the exponent 2. Now that didn't seem very efficient because, well, I could have done that in my head way faster. But if I now, um, and I can just click this little guy right here, this, this little box here in the corner, if I click and drag it all the way down, it will repeat that same calculation for every x that I have. Okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty efficient. Same thing for x times y. I'm going to do equals x times y. And again, that wasn't very efficient because 0 times 6, I could have done that way faster in my head. But if I go back to where my formula is, and again, click and drag this all the way down. Ah, it did all my x times y's for me. Very nice. What I really need from this table are the sums of each row. If I look back at the formula, right, the formulas are all based on finding the sum of x, y, and the sum of x, and so on. So, I'm going to go back to Google Sheets now, and I'm going to figure out the sum of each row. And to do that, I'm going to start with an equal sign. Um, and notice it even gives me some popular um, formulas right away. I want to find the sum. So I'm just going to type it in, sum, open bracket, I click and drag the data that I want to find the sum of, close the bracket, press enter, oh, the sum of x is 27, how nice. Um, I'm now going to find the sum of y, um, and I could do the same thing, type in equals sum and so forth, but I'm going to now click and drag to the right, and it's going to repeat this process for me. Now notice that my scatter plot went all crazy on me because it now has included these yellow numbers and it is now confused as to what it is that it's supposed to be including or not including. So here's how we go back and fix that. So to fix that, what I can do is and it's not too hard, I could certainly figure out where to click in my options and this and that. That could actually be kind of hard to do by the time you find it. So nothing wrong with just deleting the scatter plot and starting over. And the reason for that is um, I can now just re-click and drag. Notice I'm not going to include the yellow numbers here. And I'm going to do chart and a guest column chart, no thank you, I want scatter plot. Let me go down and choose scatter plot. And there we are, we're back having that good looking scatter plot that we wanted. So don't ever be afraid in spreadsheet software to delete something and start over because it's pretty quick to do so. These yellow numbers is now what I want to use to make this formula work or make these formulas work. So what I'm going to do here is, yeah, I've got to get rid of all this. Give me a brief moment. Okay, so what we need to do here now is let's use this green formula. So we're going to, we've already got the formula written down here. 
So I'm now going to start by inserting the numbers. So n is 10. I have 10 sets of bivariate, uh, or you know, 10 pairs of bivariate data. The sum of x was, let me just go back here, or sorry, the sum of xy was 62. So that'll be 62. Uh, the sum of x was 27. The sum of y was 35. Okay, divide it by, uh, again, n is 10. The sum of x squared was 109. And finally, the sum of x was 27, but be very careful, we need to square it. Okay, now this just becomes a bed mass problem. No big deal. Um, doing the top and figuring everything out, we get 620 minus 945 divided by 1,090 minus 729. Okay, that gives us, I'm just going to go over here, negative 325 on the top, 361 on the bottom, which gives us approximately negative 0.9 for the slope. Okay, so just trying to make some sense out of that number, going back to the scatter plot. All right. Um, oh yeah, my line of best fit disappeared. Let me get that back on there. I definitely want to see that. Uh, customize, series, trend line, there you are. So look at my line of best fit. It definitely has a negative slope. Now exactly what the slope is, I can't tell you for sure just by looking at the scatter plot, but it's negative. And when I look back at my value here, it's negative. You know, that makes perfect sense. If for some reason I got a positive value for my slope, I would be very confused at this point because it would contradict the scatter plot. So the slope is negative 0.9, and that's all of this green stuff right here. Now it's time to figure out the y-intercept for my line. So this little blue formula, and I'm just going to go over here to find some blank space. Um, it's pretty easy to use. Y bar is the average or the mean of the y's. Well, if I go back to Google Sheets, I can either just think for a moment and go, hmm, the sum of y is 35, and I have 10 y's, it must be 3.5. But if I want to, I can certainly find the average of these numbers. And I'm not surprised at all that I get 3.5. So. You could figure it out if you wanted to, or you can just do it in your head, whatever's more convenient. But the point being here, this is 3.5 minus the slope, which is negative 0.9 times uh, x bar, so the average of the x's. All right, so the sum was 27. There's 10 of these all together. It must be 2.7. I'm not even going to make Google Sheets do the math here. I know it's 2.7. And then I evaluate this blue stuff here, and I end up getting that B is about 5.9. And just double checking that against the scatter plot, yeah, I couldn't help but notice that that Y intercept is very close to 6. And so the fact that my math is telling me 5.9 sounds perfectly good to me. So overall, what we have just figured out is, is that the equation for the line of best fit is y equals negative 0.9x plus 5.9. Now, why did we go through all this trouble to get this red equation? Well, hopefully you remember or can recall what equations are even good for. We can now use this equation to make predictions about future data or past uh, data, like equations can be used for all kinds of stuff. So to go through all of this uh, um, work to get the equation for the line of best fit is actually now, you know, something that we produce is, is useful that we can use carrying forward. So overall, what have we done? We used Google Sheets, although we could have done all this work by hand, it just would have taken longer, but we used Google Sheets to help us with our math. We then did a little bit of math with pencil and paper, and there is the equation for the line of best fit.